Okay, so let's work through this output. I'll shut this window here to make it a bit easier to to view everything on the screen. So the first um, thing you get is the case processing summary, which basically just tells us how many uh, how many cases were excluded from the model due to missing data. And we can see that we've got 12,347 cases in the model, which is good. But that's actually only 78%, uh, just over of the the entire um, data set. So obviously some cases, there's missing data for those cases, and we might be interested in why that data is missing. Um, the next thing is just the dependent variable encoding, which is exactly what it says on the tin, really. It's it's um, how, how our um, out outcome variable was coded so no for no was zero and yes was one but I'm sure you remember that one what's a little more um, tricky and that this is deceptive because you look at this table and you think well that's not particularly important but this one can be is really useful because it's kind of a reference table it tells you exactly how dummy variables were created by SPSS so if you recall for social class we left it such that the last category of social class was our baseline category so that doesn't actually have a variable at all because it's the baseline whereas wherever we've got a one here um, under this parameter coding uh, under these parameter coding columns this is this is the, um, will be the comparison between this particular social economic class group and the baseline category of never work long term unemployed so, so as I say, it's a bit deceptive because you think this isn't a particularly interesting table, but you'll need to keep referring to it when you come to the output because SPSS will only give you these numbers and it'll just say SEC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you, unless you've, you've got a good memory, you won't remember what each of these categories, what each of these numbers represent in terms of the categorical comparison. So the next thing SPSS gives us is, is quite interesting. It calls it block zero, the beginning block. Um, and basically it's... It's what the model would, what SPSS would create as a model if there weren't any explanatory variables at all. So this is without any information. So what what what, what it's essentially saying is that um, we know that slightly more um, cases don't achieve 5M, don't achieve this 5 or more A star to Cs than do. So if you had that information alone and you were asked to guess what an individual case would be, you'd always say, well, it's slightly more likely the answer will be no, so I'll, I will guess no. And that's exactly what the baseline model does, what this beginning block does. So it's right only 52% of the time, but it's always right when it's guessing no, because it always guesses no, but it never guesses yes, so it never identifies or classifies any cases as yes, so it's never correct in that classification. And this is kind of like a baseline model, so you compare your actual model to this block zero, this baseline model, in order to see if it's actually your model is actually better, where it's actually achieving any more than merely guessing the more um, common outcome. Um, so we've got these two tables here, which I won't talk about too much because the, the variables in the in the equation and the variables not in the equation, because all of this will will, will come up on in the next block, which we'll see in just a second. But obviously, in this block, the only variable that's actually in there is the constant for the model all of these variables have not been included and you can see here what I meant about the variable encoding table here um, SPSS has now got rid of all the actual useful labeling and just called it ethnic one two three four five six seven so when you actually come to interpret the, these coefficients which we'll, we'll see in the next block um, you'll need to refer back to that coding table to actually make sense of your output so the next part of the output is entitled uh, block one. Now this is actually our model when we include all of the explanatory variables. So this is our final model. Now in some cases you may, um, as we did in multiple linear regression, you may find that you want to enter your explanatory variables in separate blocks in phases, which would basically be if you considered, uh, if you had some theoretical reason for thinking that some of your explanatory variables would be more important than others. But in this case, we've added all the explanatory variables together, so there's only actually one extra block above and beyond block zero. Um, the omnibus test of model coefficients actually compares the minus 2 log likelihood, which is the minus 2 LL or the deviance, for um, the current model with the previous model, or the current block, sorry, with the previous block. Um, so before when we had the model which didn't have any explanatory variables, we're actually hoping that there'll be a statistically significant difference between the levels of these uh, minus 2 LLs, between these minus 2 
log likelihoods so that we can say that well our new model is an improvement on the last so when we include all the explanatory variables we're actually better at predicting the outcome so we're looking for this figure to be um, statistically significant as you can see um, it is at, at 0 0.000 which does mean that our new model is better at predicting the outcome um, you'll notice that this is actually this <laughs> somewhat confusingly there's there's three versions of this the one we're usually interested in is model because that compares um, this model with the baseline model with block zero um, and of course in this case there is only block one and block zero so all of these three are the same but if you had multiple blocks you may want to compare this block with the previous block uh, in which case you'd use the block level but right now we're only really interested in the model to check that our, our model is a statistically significant improvement on the last model. So our model summary here tells us the actual figure for the minus 2LL and we've also got these um, pseudo R squares here which gives us an indication, They're not, it's not as um, as accurate if you like as with multiple linear regression but it gives us an, an indication of how much variance within the model is explained. And we usually use the Nalgakirke R square, I think that's how you pronounce it, and at 0.159 you can see that our model probably explains about 16% of the, the variance which obviously isn't a huge amount but it's, 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 still a, it's still a fair amount and we've seen that our model uh, improves on just, just guessing the more frequent outcome from the omnibus, omnibus test of model coefficients. So next up we have the Hosmer and Lemichaud test which again I'm not not sure I'm actually pronouncing correctly and um, I don't tend to worry about the contingency table here that's sort of for more detail about the, how the test is actually performed but um, really you're just looking for whether or not it's uh, statistically significant now what the Husmer and Lemshow test is actually doing is is testing the hypothesis that the the data is not a good fit for your model so actually uh, unlike usually where we're looking to see if uh, tests are, are um, statistically significant to confirm that um, that our our model is working. Here we're, we're hoping that it is uh, greater than 0 0.05, which you can see that it is. So the Hosmer and Lemeshow test, Lemeshow, sorry, test is just a way of seeing um, whether or not um, the the model the the data is a good fit to the model. And I think with with that kind of uh, level of statistical significance, we can be fairly happy that it is. Um, you've got a classification table here. If you recall back, the overall percentage of correct um, classifications was 52% um, for block zero. Here it's 64.5%. Now, of course, for block zero, it was always guessing no, which means that it correctly classified the no cases 100% of the time. Here you can see that we're much less accurate at classifying the no cases with the explanatory variables in place. We sometimes get the no cases wrong. But of course now we're actually capable of classifying yes cases and we do this 63% of the time. So we can see that our, our model with the explanatory variables is an improvement overall on the, uh, on, the, on the baseline model, on the block zero model. So the final table we get from the output here is the variables in the equation table which is arguably the most important because it tells us all about um, the individual coefficients for each um, explanatory variable and as you can see it's broken down into the dummy variables where these explanatory variables are categorical and in this case all of our explanatory variables are categorical uh, so so it's a it's it's an overall sort of picture about which variables are important now before if you remember each coefficient b coefficient here in this column for multiple linear regression this is would represent um, how much change in the outcome variable would be caused by a unit change in the explanatory variable. Now in this case this these b coefficients are actually for the log odds of the logistic regression model so they're not actually that um, meaningful on their own. What we tend to look at instead of the odds ratios which is the exponent of the uh, b coefficients this expb column here which gives us a much um, better understanding of, of what the uh, how much change in the outcome variable um, each a change in the explanatory variable will actually um, predict. Um, so first, the first thing to look at is whether each individual there's a main effect for each uh, explanatory variable. So we can see that for ethnicity that the, the significance is less than 0 0.05. So there is now the walled statistic is just another way of calculating statistical significance for each explanatory variable really. 
and before I think they, they use the t test for um, multiple linear regression but it's the wool statistic which is sort of a, a version of that for um, uh, logistic regression it's with SEC we see once again that there is a statistically significant effect main effect of SEC and for gender again there's a statistically significant main effect for gender so it's now time to sort of look at the individual comparisons. Now remember that all of these for ethnicity are compared to the white British category. And for SEC, they're compared to the um, long-term unemployed category. Now SEC1, from memory, is the managerial category. So it's basically the most affluent social economic class. And the EXPB um, is 11.371. Now this actually suggests that for those who are white British, so the baseline category for ethnicity, and male, which is the baseline category for gender, those in that category are 11.371 times more likely to pass 5M if they're in the um, highest uh, social economic class group compared to if they're in the lowest, the baseline category. So if you go through all of these, you can see that the odds um, generally uh, decline such that the sort of second lowest is only 1.374 more likely to achieve 5M than the, the the very lowest. But obviously this is a this is a big difference. So if you're from the most wealthy social economic class group, you're 11 times more likely to to pass these these five um, age 16 exams, A star to C grade, than you are if you're from the lowest group. And that's you know regardless of both ethnicity and gender. What's also useful to look at is we've actually got um, a 95% confidence interval. If you recall that we, we requested for a 95% confidence interval for our odds ratios for our EXPBs. And you can see that um, we're 95% sure that the true value for this this uh, odds ratio is actually between 9 and about 14. Um, so although you know we're not entirely confident this is the precise value, we're 95% confident that the value for the odds ratio for this particular comparison um, lies within these ranges. So as you can see, as before, this um, variables in the equation table is really important for getting sort of an understanding of how each individual um, explanatory variable contributes to the model overall and how powerful each individual comparison is. And very last of all is the classification plot, which is, again is something we requested from the from the options, and it's basically just a really good visual way of exploring where your um, model is best at uh, most accurate at, at classifying cases. So you can see basically the model will say up to 0.5 it will classify a case as no, and after 0.5 it will classify a case as yes, um, and this is the predicted probability along here, and the frequency of cases up here. Now each of these um, letters, Y for yes and N for no, um, represents oh, 100 cases. It'll always tell you down the bottom here, it's 100 cases. So you can sort of see how many cases are actually yes but should be classified as no. So down here you can see that just under point, even if the probability is just under point 0.2, about, well, like, you know, a quarter of cases are actually yes are misclassified as no. And at the other end, you can see that there's, it's, it's rarer for a, a no case to appear among the S cases, but that does occur too. And obviously, the model is, is least accurate at making classifications in the middle here, where the probabilities are, are closest to half and half at about 0.5. So it's just a good way of sort of visually exploring the, the sort of classification procedure to see um, how accurate your model is and, and where it tends to be going wrong. So that's the, the last section of the output for our first uh, main effects logistic regression model. We'll now, in the next video, move on to have a look at um, how to interpret the data when we've also included interaction terms.